All right. Trying to make sure I have y'all straight. And I'm straight. Working with this new mirror thing, it's kind of tricky for me. As it slowly wants to tilt to the side. All right, I will give it a minute and wait for someone. Hello, Lisa. So I'm not gonna talk about makeup or limelight or skincare or any of that. Um, ISF, the Ian Summerholder Foundation, posted an interview, an article about me on our new website. And you can find me under grassroots uh, initiatives. And I had started the podcast for All Lives Matter. And it was at a time where people said that it was taboo. I'll use that word because the words that they used were much worse. So, when I started the All Lives Matter initiative um, and people were finding or feeling that it was accusatory, that it was obscene, it was offensive, um, that I may be ill-educated or whatever, I mean, those are just... Uh, a few of the things that I remember over the posts that I got uh, on the tweets and, of course, through email and everything else. That's a part of being a public activist. And it. I got asked the question, what ISF interviewed me and asked me, you know, why did I get involved with ISF? Why did I care about fracking in Louisiana? Why did I care about getting up and driving from Houston to New Orleans to march for elephants and rhinos in a totally different country? And I thought a very long time um, about more about why the question was asked than I had to think about the answer. So the answer it, to me is very simple. I believe, okay, for those of y'all who need to question me or want to question me, I'm just going to be crooked. That'll be fine. Um, I am a Christian. I don't associate with any one religion. I choose to use the word spiritual. Um, I believe that I don't care what deity or God you believe in. I just feel that you need to believe in something, that, there's, that there is a greater being out there that is in charge, um, and we're not the ones making all the rules, and we're not the ones calling all the shots. With that being said, I believe that it is our duty as animals, because we are animals, on this planet, we are animals that have the will and the voice to speak up and protect our creator's creations. And so when I read the article about myself last night, and as I've read it again and again today, I think that ISF hit it right on the money when they, you know, quoted me, they took an article, well, it wasn't an article. They took an email that my partner, Patty Weston, put together and an article that I put together and then interviewed me and commingled the the interview questions that I answered as well as the statements from Patty and the statements from myself. And they came out with this amazing piece of art. And... I look at it now, it was two years ago that this interview took place, and now that I'm looking at it on the website, and I see all of my work come to flourish, that is the reason that I do what I do. I like to be the voice for the voiceless. Is there a reason for that? Absolutely not. Um, I care about 
all lives. I don't give a damn if you're human, if you're black, if you're white, if you're green, purple, yellow. I don't care if you're Asian. I don't care if you're a tree, if you're a plant, if you're a flower, if you're the water. If you require oxygen to sustain life, then you are a life to me. Hence, my hashtag, all lives matter. And I got a lot of backlash for that, and I actually still do. And when I started the podcast a year ago, um, it was a lot of hating. Lots and lots of hating going on because I wasn't black enough or I wasn't Hispanic enough. I was bullied a lot in school because I wasn't Hispanic enough. Um, and a lot of people, you know, said that I'm not white enough. I'm not this enough. You know what? Nobody's ever going to be anything enough for another person. So when you come to me and you ask me what it means to be an activist, well, quite frankly, it means that I give a shit. And I, I cuss like a sailor, so if I offend y'all, I'm not sorry. That's me. That's who I am. This is me when I wake up in the morning. This is me when I go to sleep at night. Whether I'm selling makeup, I've got stacks here that I'm mailing out today, or I'm teaching wine education, which is uh, my passion, I fight for life. Everything in this world that our creator created goes together. If you can't see that circle of life, that from the moment we are born, there is a ticking time clock on the days until we pass. If you can't see that circle includes the water out there in the oceans, the sky above, uh, the simple precipitation uh, cycle that they teach you in elementary school that I could probably get my nine-year-old to come in here and recite for you. If you can't see that all of these things go together, then I'm not sure why we'd be friends, to be honest with you. Um, so I would love to say that I had all the answers. I don't. I would love to say that I spend countless hours looking for all of these answers. But I have to live my life as well. So. What I do do is I wake up every morning and I write a goal sheet. And for example, for those who don't believe me or want to question me or whatever, this is my goal sheet for today, November the 1st, 2017. I started doing this, one, because I dealt with a lot of death um, in the past 37 days. We have lost, our family has lost seven family members in 37 days. Six all at one time. And then, of course, the passing of my father on the 20th. That is a lot of loss for one family. And I didn't reach out for people to feel sorry for me. Um, there was a lot of uh, media and fake news. The fake news is real, people. I voted for Trump, and if you don't like it, I don't really care. I, it's my freedom of uh, being an American. And fake news is real. And it tore a lot of our family apart. Um, because one dentist, who was not a family member, decided to say that one of our cousins was... Uh, not a family member and that he was taking money um, from people and using it for ill purposes whatever the fuck that means so seven family members in 37 days one of whom again is my father uh, his aunt and uncle Mama and Velia are the elders that passed away in that van with their four grandchildren if I think about the magnitude that just losing those people has 
the magnitude that that is and everything that has evolved from these deaths. And I put it, I don't know where I like this light better, and put it, you know, there. Hold on, bear with me, I'm getting mad. Okay, so if I take how I feel about losing these seven family members, um, my dad was my world, um, and I look at the grand scheme of things, I look at the Las Vegas shooting, bunch of people wanting to listen to country music and just having a gay old time at a festival that happens every year at the same time and within seconds 54 of them gone for what we still have no answer and it's going to go down in history as never being answered because he was just somebody who was able to do these American things buy guns tote guns whatever and, you know, it's just one of those things that is allowed to happen. Do we need um, stricter gun laws? I personally don't think so. The reason I don't think so is because if you think about, think outside the box. Put your rage aside and think outside the box. If you're a citizen... A law-abiding citizen trying to go buy a gun to protect your family because for example I live in Kingwood Texas this is a very snooty area of town the houses here don't start uh, don't, are no less than two hundred thousand um, dollars we have people from the town to the west of us the town to the east of us and the north and the south they come in here especially during the holiday season and they want to come and rob us because we feel comfortable enough to leave our doors unlocked. And we should feel comfortable. We pay for that comfort. If we want to go out and get robbed or if we want to go out and look at people's underwear while their pants are hanging halfway down their ass, you know, we could drive to other parts of town to get that. But we pay for the privilege of being able to be here as hardworking Americans and just hardworking citizens in general, we pay for that comfort. And we have antagonists that take their freedom of uh, being a citizen here in the United States and they say, to hell with that. I'm going to come in here because I don't want to work or, you know, I'm a product of my environment, whatever the case may be. And I'm going to go take what you have because that's what's easy for me. Both scenarios, perfectly fine if you look at them in the grand scheme of things. But if I say, to hell with that, I want to go and I'm going to go get my handgun license and I'm going to make sure that all my shit's legal. And it's going to take me a hell of a lot longer to get a gun than it's going to take Joe Blow who's going to come in here and just take my shit anyway. Because you know what? The people who are committing crimes... 90% of the crimes are thugs, they are felons, they are people with no education. Are they citizens of this America? Yes, they are, unfortunately. It's part of being American. Is it part of being American to get robbed, to get raped, to get murdered, to get stolen, to get shot up at a country music festival? No. It shouldn't be, but it is. So in my, when my blood starts boiling, I feel that I need to get up and speak. We have people literally risking their lives, women and children risking their lives to get into our country. And our country used to stand for something. But right now, I feel that our country is failing not only us, but the refugees that are fighting to get into our country. So it goes back to me being asked, why do I do activism? Why do I care? I turn that question around back to you all. Why don't y'all care? I want to know. 
don't be afraid to jump on in here because I am I'm heated. Uh, I'm not here to talk about limelight. I'm not here to talk about none of that. I am here to talk about what the hell is going on in this country and why are we not doing anything about it. Yes, I voted for Donald Trump. I'm sorry for those of you who find that offensive. I take it back. I'm not sorry. Uh, I will tell you my reasons for doing so. Um, it was simply put, I was a registered independent. Jill Stein had the uh, numbers she needed to run in 2020. So hopefully we continue promoting Jill Stein. But if I had to choose between a lying politician and a stupid man who, you know, needs to have his cell phone taken away when he goes on bathroom breaks because he tweets bullshit out of his mouth. I figured stupid we could fix. I didn't want to be responsible for putting a lying female in office. So that's the reasoning behind my vote and it's my vote to choose and I chose. So now I sit here and I have to analyze what this president is doing that I have put into office versus what the other people are saying and doing. Do I do that? Absolutely not. I believe that politics need to be left out of it and the people on the, on the ground, the grassroots effort people, we need to step up and we need to, we need to be fucking loud. That article that was written about me started off with me just going and getting online. I was on bed rest and I was on a shitload of medication, 29 medications twice a day. It was ungodly and that's how I lived for three years. ISF came around and changed everything for me. I made so much change sitting in my bed, taking my medication, just sending tweets. I would get put in Twitter jail. That's a thing for those of y'all who don't know. But it was so empowering to be a part of something so big without even leaving my house. So the light bulb went off. If I can affect this much change from the backside of my computer without even leaving my house, what would happen if I chose to say, fuck the doctors, get up, and go do something outside? Well, that should create a lot more change, and it did. When I went into St. Tammany, Louisiana, nobody knew about fracking. I was literally knocking on people's doors. Some people, had heard of it, the politicians, they turned their nose, whatever. So I decided, okay, we need to rethink this, we need to do it better. So, knowing Ian Summerholder's family, being there in St. Tammany, I called up his sister and um, asked if I could hold an event at the pizzeria that the family uh, had there in Mandeville. She thought I was a lawyer. She called back. I'll never forget. Me and Madison were on our way to Louisiana. And I pick up the phone. And it's Robin Summerholder. And I'm like, holy shit. Things just got real. And she thought I was an attorney coming to speak on behalf of Hellas Oil and Gas about fracking and why it was good. She didn't get the memo correct. Um, so I explained to her who I was. I was this random chick who was from Louisiana. I was forced to live in Houston. I hated here. I grew up in Deer Park. I winded up getting cancer. Was able to link the cancer to living next to an industrialism district. So forth and so on. And I'm on my way to um, Mandeville to go talk about fracking, hydraulic fracturing, and why it's wrong, and why it shouldn't be done in a parish that, that has their water, their only sole source of water is one aquifer. 
so that's what me and Maddie did. We went, we set up, and what started as an act of activism behind a computer became real. And once my feet were on the ground, it became more real. And when I entered McLean's Pizzeria on that day, it was very real. When the people showed up, shit got really real. We had naysayers. We had the people who were there to learn. We had people that were asking me questions that I could possibly have no answer to about the value of their estates, you know, the stuff that they had invested in. I mean, I was, I'm not a scientist. As far as, you know, environmental stuff goes, I have medical, I have a medical background, but I'm, I'm no scientist when it comes to environmental issues. So, what did I do? I took their questions and I went and found scientists. And oddly enough, the biggest scientist here in Houston, Miss Wilma Subra, and she agreed to go back and we kept doing these forums. One night, one lady stood in line two hours to meet me and ask me a question. Two hours this lady was standing in the heat. I'm trying to drink beer and have a pizza uh, or eat pizza and have a beer, however you want to say it. And I'm answering questions, signing stuff for people. And it dawned on me. In two simple weeks, I went from being an activist behind a computer to taking my ass out the front door into my home state and talking to real people that were going to be really affected if this shit was to go down. And in two weeks, I came home, I went back to Mandeville, I came home, got my treatment, went back to Mandeville, had another forum. The people that showed up doubled. And we had real scientists, we had environmental engineers, we had an environmental lawyer that showed up. We had all of these people show up. And by the end of that forum, Concerned Citizens of St. Tammany Parish was bloomed. These people that gave a shit about where they lived got together and decided, hey, this is not good for where we live, so we need to do this. And to this day, I still pay my dues, even though I live here in Houston, Texas, I pay my dues because I was there in the beginning. So the lady who stood in line for two hours to meet me, her name was Patty Weston. She actually had known Ian's mom from college and they had lived together um, throughout, on and off throughout some years. And so I didn't feel that she was a crazy fan or anything. And so I went ahead and I spoke with her. That lady stood in line at a fracking event for two hours to ask me if I had heard about the plight of elephants and rhinos. I have to say that I choked on my beer and I looked at her like she was crazy. And the fact that that story is now on this website and on this publication from the Ian Summerholder Foundation, that one night took my environmentalist self over to my animal activist self. If you're messaging me, I'm not going to answer you right now. And when people would ask me, what kind of activist are you? I would have to go through this slew of things. I mean, I might as well have had to carry a freaking resume. And then it dawned on me. All lives matter. All lives matter. Not just the lives of the people in St. Tammany. Not just the lives of the people in Morgan City and Berwick, where my family is from and where I was born, um, that were affected by the Deepwater Horizon. Not just the people in Lake Charles that are sick and get cancer all the time and usually die before the age of 65 because of the industrialism there or the industrialism in Baton Rouge. I became a full-blown activist. 
And so if you have a chance to read the article that me and my children are pictured in, you will notice that my youngest is on the cover of that article posted on there. A little thing called the Grassroots Initiative has been launched. Now, I'm not saying I'm the purpose of launching it, but I will say that I was on the front line of bringing grassroots people together to fight not just one cause. They not Let's not just fight for clean air. Let's just not fight for clean water, things that we shouldn't have to fight for at all, but we do. Let's just not fight for your kid's school. Let's not just fight for your parents' retirement. Let's fight for everything as a whole. Yes, we have politicians. Yes, we have people that we've put in place to speak for us. But are they doing a good job at it? Fuck no, if you ask me. And I put the main one there. I have spoken to my state's representatives. They're Republican as well. If I had to choose between Democrat and Republican, I would be a Republican. Yes, I'm Hispanic. Yes, I don't make $500,000 a year, but my reasonings are my reasonings. So, speaking to my state representatives in Texas, oh my gosh, let me tell you, you try to speak to somebody in Texas about oil and gas, you might as well be putting a dollar sign over your kids' heads because they probably wind up stealing your kids and holding them for ransom. But I was able to get through. And not only was I able to form these relationships with these, you know, politicians at this high, high level, I was able to use my reputation here, take that over there to Louisiana, and we started this global march for elephants and rhinos to ban the ivory trade and to stop, you're welcome, Janet, and to stop trophy hunting. Texas, whoa, another state keeps popping up every time I want to talk about sh shutting something down. Texas always comes into play. Texas has a little something called the Dallas Safari Club. The Dallas Safari Club, if you're not familiar with it, is a club where primarily we have found that it's doctors and lawyers, but any filthy rich person can be a member of. And you go and they have kind of like a gun show, except it's for trophy hunting. And you go pay three, five hundred thousand dollars and it's an all-inclusive trip and you're guaranteed to shoot with this specific animal that you choose and you're guaranteed to be able to bring the head home. If that doesn't sound fucked up, I don't know what's wrong with this world. So we started targeting, we'd go to Dallas every January, that's when the Safari Club meets and the, let me tell you what, after the third year of standing out there, there are now hundreds of thousands of people that go and they stand and protest. I've stood in protest to shut down small circuses and I damn well stood up to shut down Ringling Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus. It may have taken us a few years, but guess where those elephants are going? They're going back home to be free. Because I don't believe that they should be in there being treated the way that they are. Did I come to this conclusion because I just listened to what people say? No. I actually got in my car and had Miss Patty with me. And when the circus is not going on, most of the people that are in the circus life that we have noticed, not saying this for everyone, I have a housewife of Dallas friend who is... Uh, on on the Bravo TV series, and she was a carny, so I won't say that all of them are drunks, but most of them were, that we saw. And they're asleep in these little trailers, and they don't have any idea what's going on on the outside. So we showed up to the circus early, 
and we took our own videos of what was going on behind the scenes. The elephants were in this cage that they couldn't even take a piss in if they wanted to. They were literally squished together. Like if I took my face and went like this, that's what they look like in this cage. And not just the elephants. Tigers, they couldn't turn around. They were either, they had to either lay down or stand up. Nothing else. There was no room for them to do anything else. They were beaten. We found two elephants that this guy was giving water to. I don't know if that's a big enough, they're about that big around, about the size of this peanut jar I'm eating out of. That's the amount of water you give two massive elephants, call it a day. He stopped us and asked us what we were doing and we played dumb and we were like, oh, we're just so excited to see the elephants. And he allowed us to take pictures and we used those very pictures to shut down that piece of shit circus. Now, people have their own opinions about going to see animals. Um, just recently, my sister and me went with my daughter to um, SeaWorld. And I know that my in-laws take the kids to go to SeaWorld now. But my kids actually fight to not go to SeaWorld now because I have opened their eyes to what really goes on behind the scenes. So, that's my opinion. I'm not saying you have to do that. I'm just saying that's what I believe in. This is the way I choose to raise my kids. And they are old enough to make their own decisions. So, why am I an activist? I could probably talk to you for about five more hours, take a break and come back and talk for five more hours, take a break and just keep on going. But at the end of the day... The simple answer is, it's my duty. It's not my duty as a citizen. It's not my duty as an American. It's not my duty as a woman. It's not my duty as being part of some ridiculous thing called a pussy parade. It's not my duty because I worship God. It's not my duty because anybody told me to. It's the one thing in this life that nobody has ever told me to do that has changed my life forever. Yes, when the circus people see me coming, they're like, oh God, here's that bitch with the media. And they're damn right. ISF gave me that voice. ISF gave me that platform. And to now see that we have evolved and that we are now, we have now opened up a grassroots initiative. And for that to be, you know, in my byline of my article, I'm not going to pat myself on the back. But I want other people to snap, slap themselves in the face so they can get up and do the same thing and pat themselves on the back. Anybody can get up, go to work, come home. Shower, you could take your kids here, take your kids there. Hell, you don't have you don't even have to wake up. You can just fucking stay asleep, sit in bed all day, take medicine like I used to. You have a choice. I just made Cordelia watch Dangerous Minds the other day, and then after that we wrote we I made her watch the Freedom Riders. You know why? Because they're two very important movies. And if you don't have a good answer for your kid, Fuck, there is a million movies out there that you can show your kids and it won't be coming from mommy's mouth, blah, 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 blah. This is what they hear when we talk to them. But when you sit them down and you put them in front of a real true story of how true life was for these people and how easy it is to fall into the category of these people, that is when the light bulb goes off. And that is where kids start asking questions. And when a child has a mother like me, I take those questions and I turn them into actions. Not just here at my house in my neighborhood. Uh, yes, we have another ISF team member who has um, ISF recycle bins all over the place here in my town. 
I actually tried to donate. That thing was overflowing with clothes because half of my town is still affected by Hurricane Harvey. Half of my town still has no running water and no power. So where do I spend half of my day? Going around and giving people water. Going around and giving people clothes. Going around and giving people food. Because it's the human thing to do. I want to... I was hoping that somebody had some questions. But you can soak it in. That's cool. I want to leave you with this note. I may say a lot of offensive things. And I may do a lot of things that a lot of people don't agree with. But here's the thing. I don't care. I really don't care. Because when it comes down to it, I am a human. I am an animal. I am a citizen, which I really don't like that word. Uh, I think that human is good enough. I don't think that we need to be defined by labels, by colors, by religions, by country, by creed, any of that. I think we're just, we're just people. We are just another animal on the circle of life. And we are not at the top of the food chain. Hope that a lot of y'all recognize that. We are not at the top of the food chain. These animals that these assholes pay $500,000 to go across over there to South Africa and kill, they think they're real heroes. I got a lot of videos that will show you where they're not heroes and where that lion turns around or that tiger turns around and comes back while they're taking their woohoo pictures and has eaten them. And then everybody says, oh, that tiger should be put down. Or that lion, that lion is out of line. Why is that lion or tiger out of line? Why is that elephant out of line when you have entered its space? When you go into your restroom, now if you're a mother, you probably don't get to close your door. But that, you know, if you could close your door and somebody comes barging in there, are you just going to sit there? Well, in my family we do, but normal people... <laughs> Are you just going to sit there and be like, hey, what's up? Just taking a shit, you know, any old day. No, I probably wouldn't think that, that that would be your response. You'd be like, hey, motherfucker, get out of here. Like, I'm taking a shit. Do you got a problem? Everybody gets real defensive when people say the word black. Everybody gets real defensive when we say the word refugee or when we say the word white or the freaking tiki torches and the dorm room dumb fucks of America. Everybody has a label for something that gets their blood pumping. Mine is life. All life. We are killing our oceans. Our oceans are a sponge um, and that sponge is sucking up all of the bullshit that we put into the air to live our lavish lives of luxury. My dad would like that line. I got that line for my dad and I'll use it till the day I take my last breath. Oh, these people. We have to stop. We have to wake up and we have to give a shit. Because if we don't, I mean, there's only so many of me and trust me, the, the ones who are with me and we are a part of, whether you're a part of ISF, I'm a part of the DiCaprio Foundation, I'm a part of pretty much every organization that has to do with grassroots initiatives, uh, fish and wildlife, uh, the freaking, what's it called, wildlife worldwide, you name it, my name is on there somewhere. And my name is not on there for recognition. I don't do a goddamn thing for recognition. What I do it for is so that your children and so that your grandchildren, my grandchildren, have a future. Right now, everybody wants to talk shit about the millennials. Oh, they're so entitled. Oh, they're so this. Oh, they're so that. Why are we blaming the children? Why are we not blaming the parents? Because you want to know what's wrong with millennials? Their parents are 
putting these high standards on themselves and they're working two and three jobs because they want to live that life of luxury and they leave their kids at home and there's no supervision. They just throw money at them. They order whatever the hell they want to. You think your kids are sitting at home ordering pizza? No, they're going up the road to whoever's house. They're getting high. They're buying drugs. They're buying guns. They're buying knives. They're going out, they're shooting, they're creating all of this chaos. For what? You think it's because they're millennials and it's in their blood? No. It's because there's no parenting. There's no parental guidance. So don't say the millennials are entitled. Don't say that millennials are our future and we're all doomed. Every child that is born into this world came from two people. More often than not, one of the parents doesn't give a shit. But the other one that does, make sure that that child is raised with morals, with values, with some form of ethics that that child will follow from this generation onto the next generation and so forth and so on. And that is what is fucked up about where we are right now in America. Somewhere along the way, People just said, fuck it. If I can't change it, why should I care? Well, I'm here to tell you that you can change it. And the reason that you give up is because you're a quitter. And I don't like quitters. My daughter, who's scurrying around over here behind me, wanted to give up on softball because she couldn't hit off the pitcher because the pitcher was always hitting her with the ball. I said, swing the damn bat. Just swing it. Just try. And she hit the ball. And now she knows that this is something that she can do. I'm not telling you to go run off and start a million man march tomorrow. I haven't even accomplished that yet. But trust me, it's on my list. I'm not telling you to go grab your kids and put them in front of the TV and make, make them watch every gangster movie there ever was to scare the shit out of them. Well, that's what my dad did and it worked. But, you know... It's what's good for you. But stop fucking complaining, people. I am so sick and goddamn tired of the complaining that goes on and the entitlement. Oh, my God, the entitlement. The ones that are bitching about entitlement are the ones that feel entitled. First one to point the finger got three fingers pointing back at them. Lord, thank you, Momo, for teaching me that. Shut the fuck up and do something about what the problem is that you're bitching about. Like, honestly, I am so fed up with seeing this craziness on my feeds. On my, I, I don't know how many people I have to cut off of Facebook before I finally just say, okay, I'm just going to cut off everybody. And little by little, if you can answer a few questions about me, then you can have access to me. Because I, I may sound like the most stuck up bitch in the world and I don't get paid to do what I do. And I, I'm fine with not getting paid to do what I do because when I see change, like the ban that we got passed, the bill that we got passed that actually bans the ivory trade, that's where I got paid. When we got an elephant statue the size of the... McDonald's arches himself made out of metal donated by a metal artist in Louisiana and I can drive down Kenner Louisiana and look at all the art and get to the end and see that Ella elephant her name is Ella and she still stands there today that's where I got paid when I have people coming into my homeland and trying to attack any part of it over oil and gas because you want to ride four wheelers ATVs and boats and diesel trucks and whatever the hell else you want to do we got that stopped that's where I get paid I get paid and it is a pleasure for me to do the work when I see change we stopped the circuses from having the elephants and the animals act that, that's awesome to me. Did it take me... Let's see, I'm going to be 38 in March. Did it take me 37 and a half years to do it? Nope. Two years. 
two years of me and six other people. Six other people standing out there protesting. Sure, we got spit on. People threw shit at us. We got called every name in the book. We sit out there in the rain. It's not, it's not nice work. It's not classy. And you're looked down upon. And you're threatened. And I've heard everything in the book. But what people don't know about me is that I've lived on the wrong side of the tracks. And I prefer to stay on the right side of the tracks. But for, don't for one second think that I can't turn around and go ghetto on your ass when you come into my come into my neighborhood and into my territory where I raise my children and where we work and pay hard earned money to live in the house that we live in. Please believe I'm gonna protect mine before I protect you, yours. That's just the way it goes. So all I ask for people to do today or tomorrow or next week or whenever you're just sitting around hell when you're taking a shit and your phone needs to be charging just turn your phone off turn your phone off or use it to turn the news on we've had two attacks on our soil uh, yet again in the past 24 hours and I haven't seen but maybe two people out of the 900 and something friends that I have on Facebook two people posting about it two people that is a shame. That breaks my heart. Probably more than my dad passing. My dad lived an amazing life that he wanted to live. He didn't travel far places. He didn't do miraculous things. Now, he may have saw some miraculous things because of some of the stuff he was doing, but... My dad lived his life with no fear and not a fuck to give in this world. He was honest. He didn't care who knew what he was doing. And for the last two years that he's been here in my home, he was clean. He was off the streets. He was working out. He was helping people. And that's the kind of man that I remember my dad as. Whether my dad was passed out in an alley in Louisiana and I got that call at 2 o'clock in the morning and had to go run and pick him up and shake him around and slap him around and say, what the hell are you doing with your life? It didn't matter. Because that was my dad. Do you think that a millennial, if they got a phone call and said, hey, your dad's passed out over here in this funny part of town... I could say Friendship Alley because I don't live there anymore. But, uh, hey, your dad's passed out over there in Friendship Alley. You might want to go check him out. You think a millennial is going to get up and go pick up their kid? I mean, go pick up their parents from the dope house? No. And it's not because they feel entitled. And it's not because, you know, they don't got a car or they ain't got money. It's because they don't care. And you know why they don't care? Because of the person that's laying down, that's needing the help. That's why they don't care. Millennials are people just like us. And my children are millennials. And I love every single one of them. Most of you love every single one of them. And you know what? They're not entitled. They don't have one ounce of entitlement. Because I make them work for everything they have. Because I take time and give up my job to come and work from home selling makeup like my mama did when she was around. To be with my kids. To do the homework with them. To make sure they take their medicine on time. To make sure they get to the softball field on time. I care. I'm not saying that every parent has that luxury. But... In the time that you do have off, what are you doing? What are you doing? If you can go to sleep and lay your head down at night and go to sleep and say that you've honestly lived your day as if it were your last, kudos to you. I'll even applaud you and I'm not doing it out of sarcasm. 
because I know that I bust my ass every single day for you, for your children, for our future. I mean, unless you're planning on dying in the next 20 years, something's got to give. I fight for my children. I fight for my grandchildren. I fight for all the naysayers. You think climate change is just something the fucking Chinese thought up? I feel very sorry for you. You think global warming ain't real? I feel sorry for you. But you know what? I still love you and I'll continue to fight for you. Because that's who I am. And I ask anybody who wants to join or who wants to know how to do something. If I can live in Houston, Texas, well, Northeast Houston, with, like the Jeffersons, I've moved on up. If I can say that I have, that I live in Texas, the oil and gas industry of the United States, and I have managed to shut down fracking, stopped it before it could even start from sitting behind my computer and driving a couple of times a month to a town that I gave a damn about? What do you think if all of us on this chat right here, all 900 of my friends on Facebook, if we all got up and went and did the same thing in our own areas? What do you think would happen? Change. That's what would happen. My daughter bought this sign behind me. She, she, she was at Baylor University visiting a friend, and for whatever reason, she liked this sign. And I tell you what, this office here is where my dad passed away. He passed away about right there, not too far from where I'm sitting. And I'm okay with it now. I'm never going to be okay with it forever. But that void will never be filled. But I tell you what my dad would tell me to do after he would say go drink a beer. My dad would tell me to keep on keeping on. And then don't forget the beer. But it is well with my soul. Since I've started working in this office, like before my dad came to move in here, uh, completely he was totally invested in living in our garage and then went to go stay with some random lady that needed help with her son and humble and eventually came back here because he realized that the people out in the world are just fucking crazy well my daughter went to the military and she hasn't taken her sign with her that sign has inspired me to push even harder to get the word out that the millennials, I'm not a uh, spokesperson for them. I'm a mother of three of them. But I am a spokesperson for life. I am a spokesperson for people. And I am here to say that if you can lay your head on your pillow at night and say it is all well with your soul, I congratulate you. And hats off to you. You can go ahead and exit this feed. But I can tell you that personally, my job will never be complete until the last breath I take. My soul will always have and want more than what I've given it in a 24 hour period. So I can say that with everything that I've done, started from behind a computer and decided to get off my ass and go do something about some stuff and got some stuff taken care of. Am I proud of it? Absolutely. Do I think it's time to slow down? Absolutely not. Just as my daughter is risking her life for our country and all the other men and women and their children that are out there risking their lives for this very fucked up country right now. Just as she fights and just as they fight. Why shouldn't we fight too? 
we don't have to sign our name on a dotted line and give our soul away to the government. But we actually have more power than they do. And we don't have to sign our names and our lives away. So I ask you, why is it so hard to just care? Why is it so hard to just check in with your soul every day? Just check in. Say, hey, here's a little notebook. I'm going to jot down some things that I want to try to accomplish. I'm not saying you're going to accomplish 10 things in, you know, a year even. Like I said, it took me years to get where I'm at in the activism world. And that interview that I did with the Ian Summerholder Foundation was two years ago. Granted, he's gotten married and had a baby and we knew that a lot of things were going to change. There were some management issues and everything got worked out in due time. And the people who didn't believe, they left. And the ones of us who believed, we stayed. And I don't put a lot of energy into three letters. I don't put a lot of energy into a person. Or well, now there's two of them. I don't. I'm, I, my energy doesn't go to the letters I S F. My energy doesn't go to the man Ian Summerholder. It doesn't go to the to the woman. Nikki Reed Summerholder, it doesn't go to their child, it doesn't go to their, to his brother, to his sister, to his sister's kids. It doesn't go to any of that. They are just the fuel that I needed to add to my fire to get me where I am today. And I'm not here to recruit anybody to ISF. There's so many changes going on right now. It'd probably take two years to get your application through. But I am here to say, find your fuel and light your damn fire. And my dad used to have a saying, I'm going to light a fire under your ass. Sure, a lot of you have heard that same, that same thing. I say it all the time to mine. They're hard-headed. Find that fuel and light your fire. And check in with your soul every now and then. That's all I want to say. Is give a shit. You can change. You can create change. I'm one person. Now, I'm friends with hundreds of thousands of people all around the world. And when something happens to one of us, please believe. They reach out to me faster than my family will. Because we have been in the thick of it. Whether I've been to Spain, London, Brussels, Czech Republic. Whether I've been to any of these places. Um, Barcelona is a huge one that we have. Whether I've been to these places and met these people in person. I have sisters that I have here in Georgia, in Florida, Alabama, Mississippi, New Jersey, New York. You name a state and I've got a sister or brother there. Not by blood. But by that word right there, soul. And that, my friends, is priceless. And the change that we make is, it's unlike anything in this world. It is more than any paycheck could ever pay me. And it is more than my life will ever be worth. Because I spend my day, when I'm not talking about makeup and toothpaste and wine and what wines are this. And whenever I'm not doing business stuff, that's business stuff. This is my life. These three letters started it all. But being an activist, it's not a business. It's not a way of life. It's not even a characteristic. It is who I am. And I'm not saying that you all have to be activists or, you know, there's some people who really just want to fight for dogs. There's some people who really just want to fight for the environment. There's some people who really just want to fight for refugees. 
there are some people who just really want to fight for, you know, faux fur. They don't, they work with PETA. I choose to do it all. But what I cannot stand is when I have to go to my son's elementary, or oh, Draven's in what, middle school? Yeah. I don't know what they call it these days. We call it junior high. They call it middle school. When I have to go to my son's middle school and hear about, well, these damn millennials, that's what the counselor said to me just two days ago. The millennials. It's, it's all the millennials. Their entitlement and their, you know, they all have ADHD. Every, let me tell you about ADHD. And I'm going I'm to get off this soapbox here for a minute. Because I'm starting to cry. So, whenever I was growing up, my grandma had a thing called a yardstick. That was our Adderall. That was our Ritalin. That was our medication if we could not sit the fuck still. ADHD is... A hat that they put on children so that the pharmaceutical companies can continue to make money. When your child is not acting right or they can't focus, it's because they are crying out for attention. Am I saying that mental health and mental illness is not a sickness? Hell no, because I have my own medication that I take because I suffer from depression. Yes. The woman who stepped out of her bed and went to save the world and banned fracking and banned the ivory trade and banned trophy hunting and banned elephants from being, you know, used as instruments in circuses. Me, that person, I suffer from depression. I've suffered from depression since I was five years old. I have attempted suicide very often in my younger years. So has every one of my uh, two brothers and my sister. And now my 13-year-old and my 9-year-old are telling me the same thing. And then, you know, the school's response is, well, you need to take them to the doctor. We didn't go to the doctor whenever I was growing up. It was called hormones, and you could get them in check real quick with a yardstick. We need to stop blaming everything in this world on our president... He got picked. It was a very close race, I'll give you that, but he got picked. So apparently, the majority was not in, con in consensus at all. Apparently, not everybody took the word pussy as aggressive as a lot of other people. Sometimes people just say shit. I'm one of them. But I'm not going to go outside and put a vagina on my daughter and tell her to walk down the street and yell pussy control or whatever the hell they were doing. But that's them. At least they cared enough to stand up in every state. It was the biggest march I've ever seen next to the climate, the climate march that we did in D.C. These people gave a shit enough to get up and draw their vaginas and wear pink and color the hair and do all this nonsense. It, w it made sense to them. Nobody said, oh, the millennials have gone crazy. They're entitled. They think they want their feminism and the female presidents and all this and that. No. Everybody said they were part of the pussy... What was it called? The pussy clan or whatever they were called. Nobody said they were millennials. They were up doing stuff. But I go to the school when my son is being bullied and I get told, oh, you know, these millennials these days, they need to go to the doctor and get on medication. No. Millennials need parents. Millennials need attention just like every child needs attention. Millennials need people to be home whenever they get home from school. M millennials need home-cooked meals. Millennials need someone to hug them every day and tell them that they love them and that they care and that they are wanted and needed in this space. And if you don't have the time and you don't have the effort and you don't have the know-how or want to, ask somebody or 
put that child up for adoption before you before you decide to take it home. I get choked up and you have to excuse me. Because as a person who battled cancer and who lost my ability to have children, it is gut-wrenching to me what I hear these parents saying at school. What I hear this counselor that I'm sitting across the desk from tell me. It, it just burns me to the core. My son is, has been suicidal for the past two years. I've had to pick him up out of school. I've had to take him out of school. I've had to homeschool him. I had to rearrange my life to understand what was really going on with him. Sometimes teenagers and younger people can't go through puberty alone. That's a given. But the minute, the second I found out there was something wrong with my child, I was right there. I wasn't reading a self-help book. I wasn't watching fucking Oprah. I wasn't watching Dr. Oz. I didn't turn on the news to see if they were going to have a special that day on people with ADHD kids and depression kids. I just got up and said, I care. I love you. You are worth living for because you have this amazing talent and this amazing talent and you host these qualities. And they look at me and they say, well, Ms. DeLeon's an activist, you know, she's just crazy. Ms. DeLeon is crazy. There is no doubt about that in my mind. But what am I crazy about? What am I crazy about? I'm crazy about life. All life. Black people, I think, should be more educated in their history classes. White people, I think, should be more educated in their history classes. I think we should uh, bring back field trips so that we could understand our history more. And if we don't have the teachers that are doing their jobs, because I know the difference between what happened with the North and the South. I understand why a black person would get mad. I understand why a white person would get mad too. But I went to a very good school and I was taught what went on in the history. Some of these people and some of these children weren't and aren't given that opportunity. And it starts with their want to, their care, their give a shit. If, they lo if the millennials lose that at home... It doesn't matter if you put them in the top private schools in New York City. They've already lost their give a shit before they got there. Halfway up the road, they went out the window. So you want to know why I'm an activist? Just because I care about life. All forms of life. If you require oxygen, you are alive. My oceans are life. The birds, the damn spiders that I run from and I squeal like a little kid. The, the I live in the livable forest, that's what we're called here in Kingwood. Boy, we've got creatures I've never even seen before. And I'll run from them and I'll squeal. But at my daughter's um, tournament, a uh, swim tournament, we were doing a little exercise, and what do you know, a snake. I'm from the bayou, so I'm, I'm okay with those. I picked up a little snake out of the ground, and them mamas like to drop their Starbucks on the damn ground. Grabbing their kids like, you know, I was holding a damn boa constrictor. It was a garden snake. It was a garden snake. And then, once they saw that I handed that snake off to my daughter, and my daughter was not scared, well then... Their little bat wings just start coming down. They take a little sip more of their damn Starbucks and they 
start calming down a little bit more and they're like, okay, Susie Q, you can, don't get too close, but you, you can go a little. Children these days aren't educated. People are not educated. You know why? Because they don't damn care. That's it. So I'm going to leave you in closing with this statement that, of course, is asked backwards in my camera. But it says, it is well with my soul. And I challenge you, for seven days, I won't even put you on one of these 30-day benders, whatever. Seven days, hell, if you can make it through the first 24 hours, you're a winner in my book. Challenge yourself to find something that you care about so much. Find something that you can do with your children. When I'm out marching, my children are on the front fucking line. You know why? Because that's how I raise them. And you damn straight, the school calls me and they say, oh, well, you need to tell Draven he can't talk about this at school or Cordelia said something very political and was talking about this and that at school and some of the other kids may not be as well informed. That's not my problem. That's their parents' problem. I am sick and tired of hearing about the damn millennials. The millennials are going to ruin the world. I got a newsflash for you. The world is already fucked up. The millennials can only work with the tools that are given to them. And it starts at home. Is your soul well with you? Can you go to sleep at night and say that you did everything that you could possibly do to make sure that your millennials knew that they were loved? Were you home whenever they got home from school? If your child, God forbid, was kidnapped, could you tell the officer what your child was wearing so that they could put an APB out or an Amber Alert? These are simple questions to some of us. But I, if everybody stops and thinks, how many kids do I have? Okay, yeah. What time did this one go there and this time go? Now I understand because I have been in the work field. I'm not oblivious to the fact that you may not be there when Susie and Joe walk out the door in the morning. But you damn sure better be there whenever they get home or at least vice versa. If you're a mom and a dad and y'all can work your schedules out together, then that's perfectly fine. But is all well with your soul? Hey, Maddie, I'm talking about your sign here. Your sign inspired me to talk about some very interesting topics. So... If you can't answer some simple questions in a tragic situation, then all is not well with your soul. And if you can lay your head down at night and say, well, I just did everything I could. And then your child comes home the next day expelled from school. I don't think you did everything you could. Blaming things on the millennials is a scapegoat for parents who just don't give a shit. Children aren't born entitled. It's something that they learn. It's a survival skill that they learn when they have absent parents. That feeling of entitlement is actually a feeling of wanting to belong. Their attitudes come from you not teaching them any better. Because all wasn't well with your soul. I can't even put my head on my pillow and say all is well with my soul. And I won't be able to until I take my last breath. Because you know what? Every day that we are given in this world is a day to make change. And yes, there's a lot of people that got 9 to 5 jobs. Some people work 2 and 3 jobs to make ends meet. And that's fine. That's what my grandma did to raise us. But I damn sure better believe that my grandma had a yardstick. If we got out of line, I don't care which job she was at. All that woman had to say was yardstick or whistle when you could hear her six blocks down the road. We came running. And we, could, we were never entitled. 
Never. So why would I raise my children to be entitled? Entitlement is a state of mind. So is being rich. Doesn't matter how many zeros are in your bank account. That don't mean that all is well with your soul. Chances are, if you got so many zeros in your bank account, your children are those millennials that feel entitled. Because you're too busy out there making all that money so your kid doesn't have to do anything and you're not spending quality time with your children. So when I get interviewed and I get asked, why am I an activist? Because I'm a mother, partly. Because I care, mostly. But because I have a heart and I give a shit. And if there were more people that gave a shit about things in this world, we wouldn't have lost millennials feeling entitled and setting shit on fire and doing stupid things because that's just what they do. This whole generation is screwed up. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. Generation after generation after generation after generation. And this is the generation that was, everybody was just born dorm room dumb fucks? I don't buy it. I'm not buying what you're selling. Being entitled is a state of mind. Being educated, now that's something that needs to be addressed. And I'll address that at my next podcast. Don't even get me started on education. I just want everybody to know that if you can find one thing that you are passionate about, like I'm very passionate about my kids. My daughter who just signed on here, Madison Airman McKinney, I should say, she's fighting for our country as well as many other young people that I went out there and met and am proud to be a mother too because they they just can't be with their families. That's okay. I'll be a mother to everybody. I lost my ability to have kids due to cancer. So I'll adopt anybody's kids. You don't want to take care of your kids? Bring me your kids. I'll take care of them for you. Won't even charge you a penny. But these people, these young millennials who have signed their lives away to fight for our country, we as citizens not in the military who haven't signed our lives away we have more rights than they do so why um do we just say okay well airman mckinney and hudson and mitchell and uh maury and all these people that i'm they they're gonna do everything for me and i can just go to work and come home and i everything is safe in the world because we got these fine women and children and men just joining the military and it's just such it's the best thing and it's such an honorable thing to do all of those things may be true but let me tell you the one thing that's different i as her mother have more rights and can create more change and can stop more laws and create more laws and do more as a, as a free civilian than she'll ever do in the Air Force. That's why I fight. I fight for her, even though she's fighting for me and you and everyone else. I fight for my kids' future. I fight for your kids' future. I fight for my grandkids. I fight for your grandkids. Find something that you give a shit about and do something about it. If you care about wolves, I gotta... I got a whole stack of shit over here that I can send you and you can get involved with saving wolves. My daughter loves cats. And I happen to have a friend that lives in Florida that owns, or she's a co-founder of the Feline, Con uh, Feline Conservation out there in Florida. If you're worried about our environment, oh Lord, I got a phone book full of people I could hook you up with. Just find something. And something, if, if you can find something that you and your children are passionate about, it is that much better. 
I forced my children to go with me because that's the type, that's the type of parent I am. I didn't want to be the type of parent that my mother and my father were because they had issues and Lord knows I do not need any more issues. I chose to be the type of parent that my grandmother raised me to be. And that's who I will continue to be. And all I do is challenge y'all to ask yourself every single night, is it well with my soul? And when you say no, because it won't be, the answer is always going to be no. If you think that answer is yes, then you're one of those entitled dorm room dumb fucks. When you say no, figure out a way to start your day the next morning, should God bless you with one, to make a change. Instead of walking left, walk right. Instead of going backwards, shit, we need to be going forward, very forward. You see a man on the side of the road, hell, you don't want to give him money because he might get drunk, but um, it takes... $2.27 to get him a plastic bag with a pair of socks, a razor, a toothbrush, toothpaste, and some soap. That's all it takes. And that could be the difference between him getting a job and him not getting a job. I got a trunk full of clothes going to dress for success. Does that make me any different than you? Does it make me more superior than you? No. It just makes me human. And these are things that anybody can do. I just want people to stop asking the question, why I do what I do. Now, I gave ISF permission to interview me, and you know they asked me that question, and I gave them the same story I just gave you. It started with me and my laptop sitting on bed rest. And it's come all the way here. And it's going to continue to go. And I will continue to fight and I'll continue to take my children. This little girl here trying to sneak <laughs> off in the camera. I'm not trying to sneak up on the camera. I'm trying to lie on your shoulder. I will continue to fight whether you do or not. And I didn't have to sign my life away to do it. I don't have to sit in a classroom every day for somebody to teach me what I already know. And if I don't know about something, then believe I'm going to be on Google and I'm going to be finding out. Or I, Fuck Google, I'll go to the person. I love driving. I will drive anywhere, anytime, any day. Should have been a truck driver. This tattoo right here. This tattoo... Actually, let me turn it around this way. This X has been roaming around Facebook. I think it's only for Android users. And people put that up there. And sad to say, a friend of mine kept putting up there, Oh, I gotta go get this paper tonight. Oh, about to go hit a lick. Whatever the fuck that means. I'm not, I don't live in that world anymore, so I don't know those associations anymore. Not to say that I never did live in the ghetto, and not to say that I never did have to go make paper or hit licks or whatever that means probably means all the same shit that it meant to me 20 years ago but to use this x as a facebook post about selling drugs or anything else that doesn't have to do with human trafficking sex trafficking or child slavery is just damn wrong i have already got on to facebook and it is not a background choice for iPhone users anymore and they're working to take it off of the Android users phones because I had to educate Facebook on what that X meant and how ill represented it was being and how taken advantage of it was it was horrible people just putting dumb stuff going to the movies tonight with this red X that red X is on there for this month of October because it is the end it to end it in it to end it movement month of awareness same as it was breast cancer awareness month but why do we need one month one day out of the year to draw an x on our hands to say to, so people will ask us what's that x on your hand did you go to the club last night no this x on my hand means this that and the other 
Well, I got tired of drawing it just one time a year and decided that people should ask me why this X is on my hand every day, and trust me, they do. And for Facebook to allow people to put it on their their Facebook post and put dumb shit like gotta go hit this leg, gotta go make this paper, gotta go whatever, is just ignorant. It's ignorance. So, I challenge you all who have sat here and listened to my winded soapbox. Find something, anything. I don't care if it's a blowfish. They're endangered, just so you know. Um, find something, and if you have kids, find something you and your kids have in common or that y'all are both interested in and find out how you can get involved. That's all I'm asking you to do is get involved. And if you, if you happen to be a parent of a millennial, make sure they don't fall into that category of the entitled or the ignorant or they just want everything handed to them. Because I guarantee it wasn't, you know, some surge of energy that just stopped when their genetic makeup was being done and their DNA got crossed and they have a, mut a mutant gene running through their body that makes them entitled. They're entitled because they're looking for attention. They're entitled because their parents are not home whenever they're home. They're entitled because they want somebody to listen. The millennials, I don't even know why each generation has these stupid titles, but I am sick and damn tired of people talking about millennials. And I had to go just day before yesterday and sit in my son's seventh grade counselor's office because he was getting bullied, and I'm the one that gets called to the office because, oh, the millennials, you know, they're just millennials. They're very entitled. That was the answer. That's what they told me. I said, you called me in here to tell me this? Like, I could be doing so many other things, but you called me to tell me. My son had already went back to class. He wrote a statement and did what he had to do as far as following the rules, which is what I would teach him to do. And I think he handled it very well. But the damn counselor tells me, oh, you know, just millennials being millennials. They're very entitled and, you know, just, this is just what they do. It's not just what they do. There wasn't a whole generation of kids that was born that have, you know, this retarded genetic mutation. It's the parents the entitlement comes from the lack of parental guidance. And if this hurts your feelings and you're a parent of a millennial, I am so damn sorry, I'm not sorry. I have three kids born in this whole millennial generation. One is fighting for my rights as I speak right now and she's on the other side six hours away watching me on this phone. One is getting bullied and he's in there taking a nap. And the other one, well, she's just running around being a millennial. Joking. Just joking. She is running around. She is running around chasing Patricia. So, for those of y'all just tuning in, whoo, you got one hell of a replay if you want to do that. I, I would ask you to get a notepad and take some notes. The whole conversation started with the article that was posted about my crew and myself and my children on ISF's new grassroots initiative website. And I got asked a lot of questions and a lot of PMs and text messages and all this stuff like, when did you do all this stuff? Okay, my whole life is on Facebook ever since my daughter right here was born in two what, 2007? Seven. Yeah. 2007. Been here for a very long time. 10 years. And the question was, why am I an activist? Well, it's very simple. Because I'm human. And because I care. And because there's plenty of people in the world that don't care. And there's going to be more and more people that don't care. 
as our country continues to fall in the slump that it has found itself in and is now turned into a sinkhole. And the people that are out there fighting for our country that have signed their lives away, they're not going to be able to help us get out of this. It's up to us, free civilians with working minds and all our entitlement, to get up and stand up for something that we give a shit about. Everybody is real quick to go outside and get their banners and get their pink on whenever, you know, their presidential candidate didn't win. Boy, there were, there were people who didn't even go to work for days. Days! Financial ruins. They didn't care. They were at D.C. They will figure it out when they got back. People that were in wheelchairs, people that were taken there by all kinds of transportation and medical support, they had to be there. Okay. Hats off to you. I would do the same thing. But then you never heard of them again. They bitch every now and then on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and anybody can post a tweet. Our president tweets about all kinds of nonsense all day long. But if it takes a man like Donald Trump to win presidency for people to come crawling out of the woodworks with everything pink on, and then in two days he wears you down and you go back and you mope and you cry for the next four years, you might fall into that millennial category. You might need some education. You might need to educate yourself on what is going on in the country that you are a citizen of. If you don't realize that global warming is an actual thing that is happening, then every time you get hit with a hurricane and they get worse and worse, don't say nobody informed, didn't inform you. There have been plenty of people informing you. I don't know how the Chinese got brought up into it, and I really don't care. I know it's real. I teach my kids that it's real. We recycle. We do everything that we can. Just give a shit about something. Anything. Make yourself a note. Hold on. You're taking my notebook away. Hold on. Get up every day. Open you a book. Take some notes. Give yourself a goal. Give yourself some goals. I'm already starting for the next day. Give yourself some goals. Just accomplish one of them. I may accomplish more because I work from home and talk about makeup and wine all day. But when I'm not talking about makeup and I'm not talking about wine, y'all see me on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram talking about how I'm going to save this world. And I fully intended to do this on my own. But when I stepped back from behind that computer, got in my car from the very moment that I entered Louisiana to start talking about fracking some six years ago, and we beat it. It took us years, but we beat it. There is no fracking going on in St. Tammany Parish. Concerned Citizens in St. Tammany was born, and it's still going and rocking. And I live in Kingwood, Texas, and I still pay my dues because that's my home state. That's where I'm from. And when we got the elephants kicked out of the circus and the circus has had to shut down, I'm so sorry for the people. I'm so sorry. I'm not sorry for the people that lost their jobs. If the only thing you can do in life is torture animals, not looking too good for you. That was a win for us. And for all the assholes that got all this hundreds of thousands of dollars and they sit around at a freaking hunting club picking bets and, you know, doing raffles and stuff for an all-inclusive package to not go to the Caribbean. They're not going to Turks and Caicos. They're not even going to Galveston. They're going all the way to South Africa to kill. And they are guaranteed on this trip to kill an endangered species and get to bring the trophy of the head back. We're working on that one and I guarantee we'll stop that because we just 
this year, last year it went in front of uh, Congress, and this year it was approved. The it, trade of ivory between the United States and every other country is now illegal. So, I'm one person. One person with a lot of friends. And we all work, whether it be from home or it be from behind a camera at a, at a TV stage set or wherever. I have normal friends. I have celebrity friends. They're all just friends to me. We're all people who gave a shit about one thing. And we accomplished it and we don't pat ourselves on the back because our job is only just begun. We move on to the next thing. So... In closing, again, I promise I'm closing because I got those kids to go feed and all. I just challenge you to find something. And if you have kids, I swear to God, get your kids involved. You will have a closeness with your kids uh, unlike anything you could ever imagine. And make sure that they're educated. Find out what they're doing in school. Find out... You know, every day my kids come home. Hey, you got any homework? No, why not? I had homework every damn day. Got any projects going on? Don't wait till the last minute to tell me because Lord have mercy, I get pissed off. I'm not trying to be that lady at Walmart in the middle of the night buying a tri-board that you need for the next morning. <laughs> be informed. Be involved. Educate yourself. Empower yourself find something that fuels that fire inside your soul and until you take your last breath and this statement becomes a reality is it is well with my soul keep fighting and one day you too will make a change peace